Notice the blinding nature here of overconfident, okay? When you're overconfident about something, you're in huge danger. And he was blinded, folks, by his own need. He was blinded by his own overconfidence, okay? Because he was ridiculously overconfident. Listen, there's a huge danger when we're overconfident. So heads up, folks. We're in danger if we're over, you know, 1 Corinthians, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 12. He says, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. So the person says that, you know, I'll never wonder. I'll never struggle. I can handle this. No problem. <laughs> that person is in a very bad way. Notice Jesus gives another chance. You know, Jesus is very open here. Jesus is very compassionate with Peter. You know, he didn't start tell you, you know, he didn't start land blasting him or anything. He's very compassionate, very direct. Okay? Look at verse 34 of Matthew 26. He says, I tell you the truth. Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me. Peter, you say, you say, you, you say, never I. Yeah, you, Peter. Okay. Uh, no, uh, no, not once. Mm, yeah, three times, Peter. You'll disown me three times. Look at verse 35. But Peter declared, hey, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples, it says, said the same. Now, of course, the disciples were just following uh, Peter's lead, okay? Now, folks, this concerns me for me, all right? This concerns me for you this morning here as we come to worship. This really concerns me because how, how wrong was Peter? He was what? He was dead wrong, right? He was wrong, okay? We know the end of the story. Now, how right did he think he was? He thought he was totally right, okay? So this concerns me. We think, oh, man, we got it. Eh. You know, like Peter, he was, he was dead wrong, you see. The, the wanderer really has three main responses I want to briefly this morning share with you. Okay? Peter could have said, that, he could have put it this way. And the wanderer could have could put it this way. He told me, but I didn't listen. Okay? That's the testimony, folks, of every wanderer. She told me, I didn't listen. He told me, but I did listen. They told me, but what? I didn't listen. Just, just didn't listen, you see. That's the story of every wanderer today. I think it begs the question this morning that Peter, he wasn't a foolish person. He wasn't stupid, folks. He's a pretty sharp fella, okay? Why does the wanderer refuse to listen to that? Why does the wanderer refuse to listen to reasoning? Four quick reasons why people don't listen. First of all, it's immaturity, okay? They don't know, all right, and they're too slow to grow. All right, that's immaturity. They don't know, okay, and they're too slow to grow, all right? What's immaturity at the end of the day? It's, it's not young people or young adults that act silly. That's not immaturity. Immaturity is this. It's the inability to connect actions and consequences, all right? They can't make the connection between their choices, all right, and what's coming because of those choices. That's what immaturity is. And young people, it's good to have you all up here this morning because I missed you in the early service. Uh, a lot of times we think this is a message just hammering on you young people, okay? Yeah, you know, you need to mature. You need to grow up, okay? Isn't that right, parents? Okay. You need to grow up, okay, you young people. This isn't just a message to hammer on young people. Because you know what? You're only young once, but you can be immature all your life. There's some 60 years old, all right? 60 years old people that's still in middle school attitude, okay? And, and so we need to make note of that this morning, all right? And that uh, immaturity is, uh, is, is one refusion, okay? The other is rebellion, all right? Is uh, rebellion, all right? Um, what's my saying on that? Rebellion is, okay... That says, all right, get there in a minute. My will, my thrill, and you chill, okay? That's what rebellion is, all right? My will, my thrill, you chill. On immaturity, you got to understand, I forgot to share about this. Choose the sin, choose the stuff. We say that every Sunday, okay? Forgot to mention that, all right? But you know, this rebellion part, young people and adults, is I'm going to do it my way, okay? I want it my way, you see? You just back off, all right? And they, people won't listen. Third reason is woundedness. Hidden hearts, hidden hurts, closed hearts, all right? Why doesn't he listen? Why won't he, under, why won't he respond? Well, it could be that he is wounded. 
Sometimes things happen in a family. Sometimes things happen in a church family. Things happen and everyone really doesn't know what's happening to you. And you just hold it all inside of you and you don't deal with it. You're hurting, but you won't bring it out in the open, okay? And, and you're not listening to reasoning, okay? And it's because you're hurting, all right? And that's one, time, one, one reason why wanderers won't listen, is that they're wounded inside. And they won't share with the people that, that surround them that love them and that want to help them and pray with them and support them. Wounded. Lastly, is relational. Relational peers in my ears brought fears. Okay? Peers, listen young people, in your ears brought fears. I say this into my own shame. I recall when I was about 16, maybe 17, not really sure. I knew it was a long time ago. Um, I remember getting, you know, I had a little falcon, I think it was. But my dad let me drive one day, and I forgot to say the year in the early service, his 1969 Galaxy 500 with a 390 engine with a four barrel, whatever that means, okay? Had a four barrel, okay? 390. All I know is that that sucker could go. That man, it could move. And I remember sitting in a, we had a, a community swimming pool we'd go to, and all my buddies were there. And I would be sitting in there, and I sat in there, and I was going to show them. And I, man, I put, that th- I put that accelerator to the floor, and that car spun. It was kind of weaving, and I, I came so close to going on in the ditch. I mean, I went in a, a deep ditch there. I could have gone down that deep and been hurt bad, and my dad would have killed me to wreck his car. But anyway, but you know, you said, Robert. That is so stupid. You would be right. That was, that was totally as stupid of me to do that. Okay? All right? Why did you do that? Well, a lot of things. But the main reason why I was doing it, I was in the car, and some of my buddies were outside the car and said, Get on it, boy. Punch it. Get it. Okay? Okay? So let me tell you. Things I shouldn't be afraid of. I'm, I, things I shouldn't be afraid of, I'm not afraid of. Why? Because I'm more concerned about my friends. I'm more concerned about what people are saying around me. You see? And that's a very dangerous place to be for wanderers. So P- Peter would have to say, and many would have to say today in regard to the Lord, He told me, but I didn't listen. Are you listening, wanderer? Are you listening today? God is trying to speak to you today through His Word. He told me, but I wouldn't listen. Secondly, now I'm ashamed by what I've done. You see? Now I'm ashamed by what I've done. Here goes Peter following the Roman guards, and Jesus had just been arrested now, and and Peter is following. Look look across the page at verse uh, 58, if you would, of Matthew 26. It says, but Peter uh, followed him at a distance. Huh? Following? What do you mean here? Wait a minute. Following? What's the deal here? He wanted the comfort of knowing what was happening, but he didn't want the association of belonging, you see. So he was following from a distance, like the wanderer always does. Okay? That wanderer, he will follow at a distance, okay? Just to see what's going on type of thing. Let's take these verses, and briefly, verse 69, let's start there. And I hope you have your Bible there. In Matthew 26, 69, it says, Now Peter was sitting in the courtyard. This was a place that he could hear what was going on, maybe even see what was going on. And a servant girl came to him, and it says, uh, you, you also were with Jesus of Galilee, she says. But he denied it before them. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. He was like, ah, uh, I don't understand. What? I was, what? I, you know, I, I don't understand. In other words, he was playing... He's playing dumb. Thank you. He's playing, you know. The one who does that a lot of times. You know, we won't listen. We, what? We, we play dumb. You know, we get put over by the police. Oh, I didn't know that. We play dumb, right? Okay? And that's what Peter was doing. He's playing dumb here. All right? And in verse 71, it says, Then he went out to the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. Now, here, folks, he uses a cuss word. He uses a four-letter word. An expletive, I don't know the man, you see. You don't know him, Peter. You don't know that he called you rock, Peter. You don't know him. You were with him when he fed 5,000, Peter. Wait a minute. You, 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 were on, you were with him on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter. Come on. You don't, what, what's the deal here? Verse 73. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter. Notice now, young people, are you with me? Young people, are you with me? It says, notice here he's with the crowd now, all right? Side note, I want to talk to you young people just for a second. Adults, you can listen too. When surrounded by wrongdoers, wrongdoing becomes easy, okay? 
Wrong crowd, easy to get in on the wrong path, you see. And they said, surely uh, you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Verse 74. Very dangerous here, folks. It says, then he began to call down curses on himself. He swore to them. Like, I would rather burn in hell. You see, no one should ever say that, folks. Okay, I don't know him. Well, are you going to die for him, Peter? Kind of, you're a little bit overconfident, weren't you, Peter? Look at verse 74. Immediately the rooster crowed. Then Peter uh, remembered the word of Jesus had spoken before the rooster crows. And you'll disown me three times. The saddest verse in the entire Bible here is in verse 75. It says that he went outside and he wept bitterly. You see? Uh, Luke twenty two sixty one tells us that as, as Peter was denying him, as, as a rooster crowed, it was like 50 feet away, Peter had his, uh, Peter and Jesus made eye contact, you see. It's what, it's what Luke records, okay? So he turned and he left, he wept, that wept bitterly means violent, uncontrolled, convulsing, head bowed. I mean, no fake crying. I mean, he was pouring it out, see. And the best way we can say it is I'm ashamed of what I've done. That's what Peter, that's what he, he, he was ashamed, you see. He was ashamed. Now, have you ever been, have you ever really felt ashamed this morning? Okay, I mean just absolutely ashamed by what you've done. Okay, let me suggest to you that being ashamed is not always bad. Okay, people say, oh, you should, you should never feel shame. People say, oh, you should never, you should never be ashamed, you know, wrong. Even, um, Secular people, uh, secular people, the renowned counselor Joyce Brothers a few years back wrote an article in Parade Magazine saying that shame can be a very useful tool in many instances. She found as far as saying try, that, that the world has tried to increase self-esteem, our society has gone too far the other way, you see. So shame can be a good thing, folks. And I didn't need to hear it from her, okay, because the prophets tell us that. Jeremiah eight twelve says, are they ashamed of their loathsome, loathsome conduct? No, they have no shame at all. They don't even know how to blush. Listen, folks, when we lose our capacity to feel shame, you're in a very dangerous place. If you're here this morning and you're just not ashamed of anything, you're in a very dangerous place. Here's a good definition of shame. Shame is the painful feeling arising from the realization of personal actions that has brought disgrace. That's what shame is, all right? It is the painful feelings arising from the realization that my personal actions has brought shame and disgrace, rather. Shame is what brings the wanderer home this morning, all right? Shame is the personal realization that my actions has brought disgrace upon myself and upon other people, you see. Now, the problem, though, is people have a wrong response to shame. All right, and let's just, we're, we're in church today, right? We're in church, so let's just be honest in church. How many of you have ever done something, okay, that you've been ashamed of? Raise your hand, okay? Keep it up. Keep, come on now, keep it up. And look around. Now, I want you to, I don't want nobody in here saying, he's, he's singling me out. Robert's done found out something about me, and he's just talking to me. Look around you, look at the hands up, okay? We've all done something, thank you, we've all been ashamed of, Right? We've all been ashamed of something we've done in our lives, okay? But sadly, uh, people uh, respond to shame in the wrong, in, in the wrong ways, okay? Uh, one uh, wrong way is they disregard their shame. They just say, ah, this didn't happen. We, they just ignore it, and, and it's inside of them, and that shame is building up in them like a cancer in your soul. So some people, dis, they, uh, uh, they just disregard their shame. Others... Uh, 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 despise their shame, okay? They, they, excuse me, despair their shame, all right? Uh, this means that this is what Judas did, all right? He's like, I can't take this anymore. Uh, I can't face another day. And he goes out and kills himself, all right? And, and Satan wants to push us to the extreme, just like Judas did. You know, even today, we're, we're hearing on the news, uh, this guy named Taylor Armstrong, this husband of one of the housewives, whatever, whatever that show is, he, he committed suicide because he just couldn't take the shame of what he was doing, okay? I can't be this person all right, anymore, all right? It's an awful, awful self-destructive way to deal with shame. Final way to deal with shame, all right? Final wrong way, everybody said 
wrong way, okay, final wrong way is to depart my shame. Is it, okay, this happened in, uh, uh, this happened in Moxville, so I'm going to move to Winston, all right? I'm going to, you know, it, that is, that's what Peter did, and that's definitely a wrong move, okay? So, listen.